Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will test a new filament dryer from Sunlu, the E2. This is a dual spool dryer, and unlike regular dryers that can only heat up to 50 to 70 degrees Celsius, its maximum heating temperature is 110 degrees Celsius. It's not only capable of drying a wide variety of filament types, but also does so faster. Another standout feature is its ability to anneal parts, improving mechanical properties like strength and stiffness. In this video, I'll compare prints made with undried and dried filament, test the machine's maximum temperature and power consumption, and evaluate its performance with high moisture absorption materials like nylon, PA6CF, PVA, and TPU, rather than just the standard filaments like PLA and PETG. I'd like to thank Sunlu for sending me this dryer and for sponsoring today's video. With that, let's get started. The filament dryer comes with a tray, some Bowden tubes, a power cord, and a simple user manual. The unit I received from Sunlu is a pre-production model. The final version appears to include additional accessories. Please visit Sunlu's website for the latest updates. This dryer is designed for two 1 kg or 2 kg spools, but it can also accommodate one 3 kg spool. The tray can be used for annealing your 3D printed parts. The box is ready to use. Just connect the power cord. Let's take a look at the menu. The display shows the current temperature, current humidity, target temperature, heating time, filament type, and mode. The filament type is preset with specific combinations of temperature and time. The mode menu includes mode 1 for drying and mode 2 for annealing, each offering different temperature and time settings. Personally, I prefer to set the temperature and time manually most of the time. Use the set key to navigate through different settings and adjust the values using the up and down arrows. The screen controls and overall design are similar to other Sunlu filament dryers. The main difference with this E2 model is that it can reach up to 110 degrees Celsius, making it suitable for drying and annealing most filaments. To test the maximum temperature and heating time, I'll use an external sensor to verify the readings instead of relying solely on the built-in sensor. According to Sun Lu, heat is emitted from the right side of the machine and drawn back into the left side to circulate throughout the box. Since the built-in sensor is located at the bottom, I placed my own sensor at the top for comparison. By default, the machine's drying cycle is set to 6 hours, and I set the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. After about 22 minutes, my sensor at the top of the machine read 100 degrees Celsius, while the built-in sensor read 95 degrees Celsius. As the sensors are in different locations, a 5 degree difference is acceptable. Next, I set the temperature to the maximum of 110 degrees Celsius. 13 minutes later, the built-in sensor read 103 degrees Celsius, but my own sensor exceeded its range as it can only read up to 110 degrees Celsius. After another 20 minutes, the built-in sensor also reached 110 degrees Celsius, and the temperature remained stable. For power consumption, when heating up to the desired temperature, it draws around 500 watts. It may fluctuate from 200 watts to over 700 watts momentarily at its peak, lasting less than a second. Once the desired temperature is reached, it consumes almost no power until the temperature drops and reheating is needed. Recently in the Bay Area, we've experienced a lot of rain, causing the humidity level to range between 70 to 80 percent depending on the time of day. These conditions are particularly bad for moisture-sensitive filaments like nylon, PVA, and TPU. I decided to start with printing some undried PA6 carbon fiber filament. Generally, PA6 is more moisture-absorptive than PA12, but offers higher strength and rigidity. I will print two gears for my new propeller launcher using Sunlu PA6CF on the Prusa Mark IV. The print surface is specially designed for nylon filaments and requires no glue. I opened a new spool of PA6CF and left it exposed to air for a few days. The first layer of this moistened filament already looked poor, but I let the print finish. The result was not entirely horrible, but clearly unsuitable for use as gears. I will then dry this filament at 100 degrees Celsius. The same PA program is set to dry for 6 hours, but I will let it dry for only 3 hours initially. After that, I will keep the machine on and connect the Bowden tube directly to the extruder of the printer. This way, the entire filament path remains isolated from moist air. I will then reprint the gears.
This time, the parts printed perfectly. Compared to the undried filament, the difference is obvious. While keeping the dryer at 100 degrees Celsius, I will also print a few more parts for my propeller launcher. All six parts were printed successfully. I will place all the parts into the machine for annealing. I will anneal them at 100 degrees Celsius for six hours. This process improves mechanical properties such as strength and stiffness. However, annealing may also cause slight shrinkage in the printed parts. For PA6CF, the shrinkage is generally minimal. After annealing, the XY reference point is 14.72 millimeters, which has a 0.27% shrink. For the z-axis, it expanded to 34.37 millimeters, which is about 0.29%. As all parts were annealed together, they should shrink uniformly and should fit and function. This is especially true for this propeller design, where I have already left enough clearance in the model. As expected, they fit together perfectly and the gears move smoothly. Let's take it outside and test it. It functions very well. Next, I'll test some nylon. As you can hear, there's a sizzling sound during printing, which clearly indicates the presence of moisture. Compared to PACF, standard nylon filament absorbs significantly more moisture from the air. The sizzling sound continues throughout the entire print, and the result is awful. The print is completely unusable. To address this, I'll dry the nylon at 100 degrees Celsius for six hours and reprint the same part. After proper drying, there's no sizzling sound during printing. The result is impressive, the print turns out beautifully, comparing it to the undried version, the difference is like night and day. Additionally, I printed a nylon version of a propeller launcher for further testing. All the parts printed without issues fit together nicely, and the gears also move smoothly. Besides nylon, PVA is also known to be a challenging material to print as it tends to string excessively when not properly dried. Not only is the PVA affected by moisture, but PLA has also been impacted by the high humidity these days. To resolve this, I'll place both in the dryer and dry them at 60 degrees Celsius for three hours before reprinting the same model. After drying, the PLA appears to be properly dried, while the PVA might still need more time. However, since the PVA only serves as support material and will be removed, I think it should work fine. Let's soak these models in water for 12 hours. The undried model looks terrible. Not only is the print quality significantly affected, but the PVA is also much harder to remove. I had to peel it off in tiny chunks, whereas the support on the dried model softened and could be removed in larger pieces. Next, I'll test TPU. I will take out a roll of TPU that I have stored in a camera dry cabinet. Even when the room humidity rises to 70%, the cabinet still keeps the humidity around 47%, which is fine for PLA and PETG, but might not be sufficient for TPU. This tire model isn't too bad, there's some stringing, and the surface isn't perfectly clean, but it's a usable part. There's more stringing along the seams and inside the model. To improve this, I'll dry the TPU at 60 degrees Celsius for three hours and reprint the same model.
after drying, the results are noticeably better. Compared to the undried TPU stored in the dry cabinet, the surface is much cleaner, and stringing is significantly reduced, especially inside the model. During my test, the E2 showed its ability to reach the claim maximum temperature of 110 degrees Celsius in about 40 minutes, and it reached 100 degrees Celsius in just about 20 minutes. With this higher temperature, high moisture absorption materials like nylon, PA6CF, and PVA can be dried in a shorter amount of time. The dryer can also be used for annealing, which enhances the strength and stiffness of 3D printed parts. I got excellent results with PACF, regular nylon, and TPU using this dryer. As long as the filament is properly dried, even nylon can be printed as easily as PLA. The enclosure has two layers, so when the internal temperature reaches up to 110 degrees Celsius, the outside temperature is around 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, similar to the heated bed of a 3D printer when printing PLA. Everything worked as expected, but I have just one suggestion for Sunlu. As I previously tested their S4 dryer, a four-spool model with a max temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. That model had a storage mode, which automatically heats the machine when the humidity exceeds a preset level. For the new E2, I'd like to see this feature as well. It would be ideal to have a device that keeps humidity levels at 15-20%, to 20%, ensuring that even high moisture absorption materials like nylon are always ready to print. If you are interested in the Sunlu E2 filament dryer, I put the link under the description. The pre-sale starts on January 8th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, with a special price of $279 for the first 300 units. Be sure to also check out my website auroratechchannel.com for the latest recommendations for 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines, as well as my price tracker, which scans popular brand websites and updates prices hourly to help you find great deals. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.